Today on Was a Wednesday, we're going to be showing you how to set up tournament style head kicks. In general, the foot has a long way to go from the ground to the opponent's head. So if you don't do something to set it up first, you're going to have a hard time landing these type of kicks. The first thing we're going to talk about is using the hand to set up the kick. So you can do this a couple different ways. One is to punch or back fist, getting them to reach for the hand so that your kick can come around the guard and hit the head. The nice thing about doing it this way from this type of position is the foot is actually traveling behind the shoulder and is difficult for him to see because you create kind of a blind spot for the technique. The other way to work this would be to throw it to the open side, in which case you're creating a barrier with your hand. Instead of getting him to reach and create an opening, you're going to punch and use this so that he can't push through to get to the kick. So you're creating a barrier so that he can't block it with that hand. The only disadvantage to this style is, of course, he could potentially block it with this hand. So this wouldn't be a good one to do on somebody who carries their guard in this position with both hands up. But if he has a little bit more of a point fighting tournament style and he's waiting to split you in half with that reverse punch and that hand's down, you create the barrier and then your kick can come straight up to the head. On the second kick, you'll notice I didn't really use the hands to set up the kick. Instead, what I did was establish the pattern so that he thought he knew what I was gonna do, and then I broke the pattern. Sometimes it's okay to be a little bit predictable when you're sparring, as long as you intend to break that pattern later on. So on the second kick, the way I set it up is I threw a body kick, which brought his guard down. I threw another body kick. So when I lifted the leg the third time, the assumption in my opponent's mind is that I was going to the body again, which left his guard down for that Jodan Mawashigiri. So again, on this third one, I set it up by creating a pattern and then breaking the pattern. So I went body, body, then when the leg lifts the third time, the assumption is it's going to the body, and at the last second, it changes to a head level kick. Now it's always a good idea if you're gonna be competing in tournaments, to take the techniques and drill them on a bag so that you can develop your speed, distancing, and timing. So on this one, I would throw this punch close because I'm intending on him blocking it, and then this kick would be intended to come to the back of the head so we can shoot a little bit further forward. So again, from the front. Right here, one, two. So you're throwing that front hand, front leg. Notice how I sneak the back leg up as I throw the punch. So he probably, because of the punch distracting him, won't realize that my stance has changed into position for the kick. The secret with this is don't let your head height change. Don't stand up like this because he's going to see it. Keep your head height the same and try not to lean back on the kick. So you want him to think you're at a punching distance and you're going to be punching. Anytime you lean back, they know you're not punching. So you can disguise the kick by keeping your back as straight as possible. Now in training the second combination, of course the concept here is to drill the body a couple times to get the opponent to drop their guard and then go up top to the head. So that's what we're going to do here is body, body, head. So again, you're right here, punch, body, head. So again, one, two, 